Hello guys, how are you? Javier from the Thrive Real Estate team at Compass. My name is Thomas. I know it's been a while since I've been here. I've been traveling the world. I went to the Turks and Caicos. I biked from San Francisco to LA, raised $18 million for some people and some charities. Uh, finally back to work, uh, much to the annoyance of my team. Uh, actually, no, we like him at work. <laughs> now I'm gonna go to Turk and Caicos, and I, actually, no, I'm not going anywhere. What else is not going anywhere is the New York City market. It is not going anywhere. It's we, not going up, it's not going down. It's kind of like flat. If this is, I think the next couple of months is gonna be a very nice window of opportunity for buyers. Yeah. Um, uh, and for smart sellers. You know, this is, you know, my other half likes to say that, you know, you tend to make money on an apartment during the purchase. And this is one of those times where you're gonna be able to get a good deal out there. You know, you're gonna have sellers that are, that were late to the game that should have listed months ago, as we told them. Um, they're just coming to market now. Uh, so they're gonna be feeling a pinch, right? There's, uh, you have interest rates rising, you have a stagnating summer market. Um, you have more inventory coming in too. Like for the last four months, we have seen an uptick on inventory coming in. Now, contract activity is also up, but the contract activity is not matching the new inventory coming in. So we are finding that Sellers are competing with more units, which gives buyers a little bit of breathing room. So what does this mean? This doesn't mean that you can make an offer at 10% below us, but it does mean that you don't have to make an offer the moment you walk out of an apartment. It yeah. means that you have a few days to sit down and look at your numbers, maybe talk to your lender to see what other good products they have so you don't have to pay that five, six percent rate. Maybe you go with an adjustable mortgage rate, which most of my buyers are doing, a 10 year arm. You're getting at a 3.75, 3.25 even. Um, and you have time to breathe. You have time to see more units without going crazy. When you go into an open house, it's not 20 buyers you're competing with, it's five. You're still competing with much less. Much less. So, one of the things that we're hearing from a lot of buyers right now is I'm putting my search on hold because the interest rates have gone up. Javier, what do you think about that strategy? I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I really Not think that's a terrible because... idea. But, but so this is what happened, right? A lot of people's rationale is interest rates eventually will go down and they will, but not tomorrow, probably not until the end of the year or next year. Even if we were to hit a recession, the then you're gonna have the problem not just of interest rates, you're gonna have income problem, cash availability problems. In a recession, how much banks are gonna be lending? In a recession, how much sellers are gonna be willing to take a hit on their price? So yeah, I don't think you should put your search on hold, but you could make your search a long-term search. You're seeking for an opportunity. Well, you know, it's like we just did a deal for a high-end rental tenant, right? They were looking at a two and a half million dollar property. It was something that they could make work. Uh, so I had a conversation with them. They were working with a different agent at the time and they were like, hey, what do you think about this apartment? And so I asked them some questions. They came out that we could make it work. So my response to them was, you shouldn't have to make a two and a half million dollar apartment work. Right. So what that means is because the competition is a little bit lower, because you're gonna make it a longer term search, that you can actually find the apartment that you want. You know, something that you get excited about, something that is like, oh my God, I love living here. You know, I just need to paint, or maybe I have to redo some cabinets. But essentially, you can buy a finished product that is ready to go, and something that you can see yourself living in for the next 10 or 15 years, as opposed to saying, oh, well, I'll buy this now, and then we'll sell it in five years. Because that's not, Really, that's not a long-term strategy to making money on your real estate, right? Right. You want to hold property for, I don't know, seven to 10 years minimum before you start thinking about selling it again. Um, so yeah, I think right now is the time when buyers can be a little more picky. They can go out and get a better deal. I think that, sure, the interest rates have gone up, but the, the, the versus is, you know, these tenants are now paying $10,000 a month in rent. Well, that's money that they're never getting back, right? Yeah. So it's two hundred and forty thousand dollars over the next two years. That's a quarter million dollars. That's that's half of the down payment for the two point four yeah. million dollar apartment. Now, another thing that's important to realize: interest rates are going up. They're probably going to tick up maybe a little bit more depending on the demand on mortgages. 
However, I think it's important to stress that before 2008, interest rates were at 8%, 9%, 6%, 12%. In the 80s, we were looking at interest rates at 18%. So historically speaking, you're still making money. When you have interest rates at 5.7%, at 6%, and your inflation is still 8%, you're still making money. Right. You are still borrowing money by less than inflation is. So you would be losing on your cash if you're a buyer. Now, this is what's happening with this market. Buyers are pulling out, sellers are pulling in. How, if you're a seller, now we talked about buyers. Let's take a quick, a quick look at if you're a seller, what sh should you do? You're entering a summer market where you're looking at more competition and less people looking for apartments. You have to be very smart about pricing. I am not saying that you have to price below market, but you really have to look at who you're competing against. You have to look at the units that have closed recently. What's in contract recently? We do that for you in a comparative market analysis. Uh, and then look at who you're competing with. If in your building, in your line, there are people who have higher floor apartments at a lesser price that you want to list, it doesn't matter the finishes of your apartment. They can be the most spectacular. It's not gonna sell. Unless it's a walk-up. A higher price walk-up. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was not concerned about that. That's true. See, well, that's why we partner. Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah the, the, you have to be very smart about pricing. There are buyers for your unit out there. I can promise you that that's the case at the right price. So this is not the time to go like, well, but I need to room to negotiate because that room to negotiate with might be the difference between somebody deciding to look at your apartment and somebody deciding not to look at your apartment. Yeah. So price according to the market. If we are not your agent, listen to your agent. If your agent is not telling you to price according to the market, trash them. Really, sorry. I hate to talk shit about some agents, but there are people who are pricing apartments here and there, and they're doing a disservice to the buyers, and they're doing a disservice to, to their sellers, and they're doing a disservice to their potential buyers. You know my favorite thing to hear from a seller, uh, and with our new listing coming up in Harlem, she said, how about we lower the price so we get more interest in it? And that is the best. Drive. That literally made me so happy because I'm so used to hearing people say, oh, let's shoot for the stars, let's shoot for the moon. And I have to like reel them in and use this whole roller coaster analogy. And she, you know, it's not her first time buying or selling. And she was like, no, I think, I think we will finish at that number. But I think, you know, let's go in low and let the market bid us up. If the market doesn't bid us up, then that's just what the apartment's worth. Because at the end of the day, it really is the buyers that sets the price for the apartment. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, this, the seller could say, oh, I don't need to sell, so I will list it for $10 million. But if nobody's out there that's going to pay $10 million, you're never going to sell your apartment, right? So Absolutely. if the buyer says, I'm only going to pay $9 million for it, the seller either needs to sell or they don't sell. So, So... The market is flat right now. It's not going up. It's not going down. It's kind of like staying steady. It's actually a really good place to be it's, as a, a good agent. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's a balanced market. Everybody has a little bit of advantage in every deal. There's no, there's some times where the sellers have all the power. There are some times where the buyers have all the power. Right now we are in a market where we can actually sit down and have a conversation and really see what are the needs of each side and how we can bring them together and not just talk about a crazy number here or there, crazy low or crazy high. Now there um, are some caveats to that. I think, Tell me about those caveats. I think Brooklyn's still on fire, the Brooklyn condo market. It uh, is. In the, especially like in the townhouse buildings where you have three or four units, you know, maybe two of the units have a backyard, another unit has a, a roof deck. But even then though, even in Brooklyn, I was showing to a client yesterday and the, the, it's a new development and the, one of the apartments, the buyers had to back out. They couldn't afford it anymore because yeah. their, their mortgage rate went up to a point where it became unaffordable. Another one that we were talking about, well, are there concessions? And he did say, look, the other ones uh, sold with no concession, but interest rates have gone up. So we are considering yeah. concessions. So even in a hot market like Brooklyn, the demand has slowed down. It hasn't gone down. It has just slowed down. It's that analogy I think I said in the last video. So you're going, you're 80, going now, going right now to 80 or 80 to 50. You're not really at a standstill. Do we think that in default the market's gonna recover? 
Yeah. I think that it's going to recover, but I don't think it's going to recover in a Not like the spring. Way. No, I no, think no. it's going to feel still like a flat market. Of course, well, I think, like I think, neighborhood. Chelsea very hot right now. Upper West Side not so hot. Yeah, but but look, things are moving. I you know it's funny. I'm thinking about the speed thing, and I ride a motorcycle. And not that I would ever go over the speed limit. However, I doubt that you would. If I had ever gone over the speed limit, let's say 80 or 90 miles an hour, and I slow down to 50, it feels like I'm not moving at 50 miles an hour. Right, but if the reality is, I'm still going at a pretty good clip. Uh, so, if anything, this is going to be a boring market, actually. Yeah, the, the, and that's what I first see happening in the next three to six months. It's just going to be boring. A lot less heartbreak, but a lot less of like tears of joy. You know, just moving along. <laughs> Anyway, if you have any questions about real estate, about New York, about the neighborhood, about money, about life, shoot us an email, shoot us a DM, like, share, do all that stuff around this video. I don't know where the buttons are. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Yeah.